Prologue. It was about 6 p.m., already pitch blackout, and one of those wet, stingy snows was coming down hard. Mr. Todaro parked his car in the street in front of the crew's clubhouse. He was an older gentleman, 60, I think. What was about to happen to him was, well, to me it was something out of Auschwitz. Roy had ordered Freddy, who was like Roy's servant, to lure Mr. Todaro to the clubhouse by making him think Roy had a used car to sell. But actually, Roy was going to kill him so that the man's nephew, a friend of Roy's, could take over Mr. Todaro's film production business. Roy was always available for this kind of work. After the first few, I think he started enjoying it. Anyway, it's dark and it's snowing, and as expected, Mr. Todaro sees Roy's guy Freddy waiting outside and says hello. They start walking toward the clubhouse. Now, there is a picture window with Venetian blinds next to the doorway. And as Freddy's walking, he sees someone inside the clubhouse pinch the blinds and look out. All he sees is the person's eyeballs. It's eerie, and he begins to quiver. He knows Mr. Todaro is going to die, but he's never seen Roy DeMeo murder before. Mr. Todaro goes in first. There is a living room off the hallway that leads to the kitchen. As soon as Mr. Todaro is past the opening to the living room, Freddy is startled to see someone he knows, Chris, leaping out into the hallway with a butcher knife in his hand. It was almost a balletic move. Chris, by the way, was the first kid to join Roy's crew. At the moment, he doesn't have any clothes on except for his jockey shorts. He always worked in his underwear because he didn't want to bloody his clothes. Freddy starts to wet his pants. He believes Chris is going to stab him, but no, Chris just grabs him by the arm and wings him out of the way. You, over here, he says. Freddy then sees Roy DeMeo coming out of the dark from the other end of the hall, just gliding along, and he's got a gun in one hand and a white towel in the other. He just glides up and shoots dumbfounded Mr. Todaro in the head, and before the man even hits the floor, Roy is wrapping the towel around his head to prevent the blood from spurting all over. Then Chris comes over and stabs Mr. Todaro in the heart, many times. That stops it from pumping blood, Roy tells Freddy, who's still shaking. The murder only takes a few seconds, but of course they're not done yet. They're going to make Mr. Todaro disappear. Some other kids in Roy's crew appear from somewhere and they all drag Mr. Todaro's body across the kitchen and into the bathroom, where they put it in a bathtub. Now before they begin cutting Mr. Todaro up, they have to wait 45 minutes or so until his blood congeals. Dismemberment isn't so messy that way, Roy tells Freddy, like Freddy was a medical student. So they wait. Maybe they even ordered a pizza, I don't know, but we do know they did that once while waiting. One of the men waiting actually lived in the clubhouse. The others called him Dracula, and not just because he had silver hair and a deep voice. As I indicated, Mr. Todaro was one of those freelance jobs that Roy and the crew did. There were a lot of those, but normally they were out making money for a gangster named Nino. You knew Nino was a gangster as soon as he walked into a room. He was a murderer too, but did not do as much killing, and so far as we know, was not present for any of the dismemberments of the clubhouse. Neither was Dominic, who was the guy Nino used to collect his cash and keep an eye on the DeMeo crew. When Dominic was a little boy, Nino practically stole him from his father. Dominic went on to be a Green Beret war hero in Nam and was a tough guy, but he did not have a killer's eyes. Roy and his crew, they all did. Eventually, Mr. Todaro's body was taken out 